I, I read somewhere that you, when you, you were sort of growing up as a player, some of the coaches that looked after you thought you had a real problem with temperament and your temper. Yeah. You seem really mild mannered to me, but, but was that real? Was there? A, did you have? A, and, and is that still in you somewhere? Do you have to watch it? I wouldn't say it was just an outright temperament of a young kid being angry all the time. It was maybe at times overly competitive because I wanted to win so much that if I didn't, then obviously I'd be upset. I'd be, I'd be angry. I'd be. I'd be angry at myself that I, that I haven't won something that comes from a young age when I was in the garden with my brothers, um, doing anything with my brothers. We'd be competitive all the time in anything that we ever done. So I grew up with that, with that, and I was grew, I was brought up in that, um, in that. So for me, it was normal to to be angry if you didn't win. All right, Trent. Thanks for doing this. My pleasure. Okay, now I want to start with your name, right? Yeah. Trent Alexander Arnold. I know you're a scouser, but it sort of sounds like some sort of aristocratic family from the 18th century. I've heard that before. So what is? I don't. That's original. You can't <laughs> think you've heard it before. So what's? Uh, just talk me through the Trent, the Alexander, the Arnold bit. Um, well, obviously Trent is yeah. is my name, um, and then Mum's name is Alexander, Dad's name's Arnold. Um, is your mum Scottish? No, she's and American. Scottish blood. She's got Scottish blood, yeah. Right, but okay. she's American. Right. Um, she was born in, in the States. Um, so, yeah, that's just how it came around. Double barreled. Um, why not have both? And the song, right? Yeah. Do you ever go around the house on your own singing it? I wouldn't say that, no. I wouldn't. You, but you have? No. Ever? No, I've never sung it to myself. You've never Maybe sung in it? my head. I've never actually. You never sung it? No. Go on, sing it. Go I'm on. not singing it. Go on, go on, go on. No chance. All right, so what's it like when you hear it? Um, it was one of the, the proudest moments I've had when really? I first it, yeah. Most definitely. What, just, did you, you didn't know it was going to happen? No, not at all. Do, do players, see, like players, you, you're 21, you've, got, you've now got your own song, it's owned by Liverpool fans and known by Liverpool fans all over the world. Do players who don't get a song feel inferior to players that do? No, I wouldn't say so, no. I'd say the fans share their, their love throughout the whole team, so whether you've got a song or whether you don't, you know that they, they support you sometimes. There's, there's just not a song that they've thought of yet, but eventually it'll come. Um, but the thing about you is the, the, the whole point is that you're the only scouser in the team. Yeah, which is obviously a, a proud thing that, that I'm sometimes massively proud of. Um, something that I think comes with, with responsibility, but it's something that I don't take for granted because I know it's so hard to, to do it and you know that not many people are able to do it and you know that it's probably everyone in the stadium's dream to to be that person who's in the team that's from from the, the actual city that they're from and to be able to do that and be a fan growing up and being able to... Do you think the other players, like the guys that are from, you know, Egypt and Brazil and Holland and, you know, do, can they get it in the same way as you do, do you think? I think they understand what it's about and that. I think they understand what the club's about and they understand the, the history, the tradition, the things that have happened in the past, the the values of the club. Um, but that's that's come at a later stage when they've 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 arrived. I I grew up with it. I understood it from a, from an early age. I was um, taught it throughout my childhood, whereas they, they, they weren't. But still, nonetheless, we're still getting the same info. We're still understanding the same things. I mean. We understand the traditions and the values of the club. But they would go, like, if, if, if somebody came in, if another club came in and offered them, you know, a lot more money and the club was happy with it and off they go, um, so they can't feel that same connection as you do coming from, from... Do you think the modern footballer can have that same connection with the fans? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah. You don't think it's just because it's Liverpool? The Liverpool's kind of a bit special in that regard? Um. I think it's it's well known over the, throughout the history of the club that the, the the fans are special and they love the players more than more than anything, um, and the pl past players that comment about the fans today will still say that they're supporters. Um, so I think Liverpool is special in that in mm. that in that regard. But I feel as though if you connect with a club, then that can happen anywhere. It's not just about the fans. It's whether you fit the the city and the environment that you're living in. The people accept you. 
um, you feel at home, your family feel at home in that city. So I feel as though players can go anywhere and kind of mould to that, that club. But I think Liverpool is probably one of the easiest to do it because as soon as you come in, you're accepted, you know that. And as soon as you embrace the how big a club, how big the club is worldwide, and the the amount of fans and the pressures and the 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 criticisms that that come with it from time to time, then the more that you'll be accept, be accepted, the quicker you'll be be accepted, and then the easier it is to to just settle in. And how, how long was it before you were? Was there a moment when you felt within the dressing room, I am now part of this? Um, and does that come does that come quickly, or does, is it actually something you've got to fight for? No, I'd say you have to fight for it. You have mm. to in in that in that place. Um, because when I first came in, that was probably when the team started to progress. We we started to to be a bit more promising. That so it was it was more about me trying to get into that mm. and trying to be a part of that plan for the future and um, get get on track in that in that sense. So if I was if when I was younger, I was thinking, can I get into that setup? Can I be a part of that team? Um, and how do I go about it? But it weren't until, well, at first, I weren't even in the, the first team dressing room. You have to wait and get your locker, and then obviously you start to play a few more games. Um, but it's not until you, you're probably playing week in, week out until you, you feel as though you're accepted and yeah, you're part of that team. But obviously, with the, the senior players, they try and help you settle in and, and be yourself around them. But, but do they all? Do they all? Because if you're a player, and they see this young kid coming in, and there's, there's some of them bound to be thinking, hold on a minute, I'm knocking on towards 30 now, and he's going to come in and take my place. Is that, not a, is that competition not there the whole time? Yeah, of course. There's competition nonetheless, whether you're 30 or whether you're, you're 18, fighting with a 22-year-old. That, that competition, you want to play week in, week out. That's obviously no one wants to be sitting, sitting on the bench, but for that young kid to come in and take your place, he has to be out working you, so... It comes part and parcel in whether you want to work harder than the other person to fight for your spot and whether you want to keep your spot or give it up easy. Mm. You want to be taking someone's spot, you need to you need to be shown to the manager and the staff that you're, you're capable of doing that. And When did you know that you were going to be a really good footballer? How old were you? I wouldn't think now that I'm a, a really good footballer. I love playing football. Obviously, the, the people who make the decisions... It's from when I was young. All you're saying you don't know that you're a good footballer? You're trying to tell me you don't know you're a good footballer? I'd say I haven't reached full potential at right. all. Um, so until then, then there's no there's no point in, in kind of putting a label on, on where I am. I'm not at where I, need, where I need to be and where I can be. So there's no point putting a label on it. Um, label on it in my mind. I still have a lot of improvement to do. There's still a lot of hard work to be put in. But... Growing up, there was always indications of... I was always in the team when I was in the youth teams. I was always playing every game. So I knew that the people who were making the decisions liked me as a player. But for me, it was just about playing every game. I wanted to win every game. I had that competitiveness in me to, to really... Just wanting to win and the love of the game was always there. It was never me thinking I'm putting a plan ahead to, to being a footballer. It was more just we keep, every day going into training, wanting to win and... And wanting to, to kind of just be as competitive as possible. But, but now, I mean, you get you know you get talked of as like sort of reinventing the position and could he play in centre midfield and all this sort of stuff. I mean, it's like you've got you've you've kind of gone to a different level that most right backs do because you've 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 obviously you, you you play in a way that people are just starting to think this is a bit special. Yeah, I, obviously that's that's their opinions. It's I try and play as good as I can to help the team win stuff. We want to win trophies. It's it's more about the the team <clears> trophies that matter more to me than than any any opinion that could be given. Any um any individual accolade will never come close to a, a team trophy because mm. they're the ones that you grow up dreaming of winning. They're the ones that mean the most. You know mm. that they're the hardest ones to win because you need the people around you nonetheless to to really buy into the idea of what the manager's trying to do, the the game plans, and then obviously playing as well as you can to try and make sure that that you win trophies. Mm. I, I read somewhere that you, when you you were sort of growing up as a player, some of the coaches that looked after you thought you had a real problem with temperament and your temper. Yeah, you seem really mild mannered to me, but, but was that real? Was there? A, did you have? A, and and is that still in you somewhere? Do you have to watch it? I wouldn't say it was just an outright temperament of 
just a, a young kid being angry all the time. It was, like I said, just maybe at times overly competitive because I wanted to win so much that if I didn't, then obviously I'd be upset. I'd be, I'd be angry. I'd be, I'd be angry at myself that I, that I haven't won something. That comes from a young age when I was in the garden with my brothers, um, doing anything with my brothers. We'd be competitive all the time in anything that we ever done. So I grew up with that, with that, and I was grew, I was brought up in that, um, in that. So for me, it was normal to to be angry if you didn't win. But did that affect the way you played when you were playing? Were the moments where your temper got the better of and affected you for the worse? And if you had to get rid of that, yeah, I'd say because it would it would make you lose concentration in the game. You'd be focused on your mistakes and. Say if you give a foul away, give a penalty away, you made the mistake to 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 cost your your team a goal, you're kicking yourself, and then for the next five minutes you're out of the game, um, mm. and you're not, and then again you, your team pick you down to ten men. Mm. But I'd say the the control and the the temperament would be the same as practicing your 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 passing, your receiving, your your skill sets, um, your shooting, your your crossing. It was the same. It was the mentality side of it is just as important as the mm. the um. The technical side of the game. So. so here's one for you. What if you could only say one of these two things defines your attitude to it? Which is it? Do you love winning or do you hate losing? I'd say I hate losing because the the feeling of someone else getting the better of you is doesn't. It's it's weakening. It feels weak. You feel as though you've let yourself down. You've let people around people around you down. Um, so yeah, that feeling of a, of a loss in any way, shape, or form is. Is not nice at all. And what do you? How do you learn from letting yourself down? What do you do then to kind of get something beneficial out of that, or do you just put it behind you and move on? I think it's healthy to put it behind you, but I think in every loss or every mistake, there's a lesson to be learned. And I think if you don't learn from from the mistakes that you make, then that is the real mistake that you've made. Is is not learning from it, and then. That's when things keep repeating and happening again. If you can learn from it and make sure that it doesn't happen again, then I feel as though it's not a mistake, it's a lesson that you've learned. Um, um quote that changed it for me was mm. was making sure that I learned from the mistake rather than nestling on it for so long that mm. it was it was affecting me. Uh Klopp in a word. Unbelievable. Just everything about him in every way. His man management, the way he goes about it as a person, as a manager, just unbelievable. Yeah. What's the the clock that we see on the television at the touch on the touchline and in his pre and post match interviews, which is all that most of us ever see. How real? How how close is that to the clock that you see on the training ground? He's the same person because I feel as though in them interviews, in them, when you see him on the camera and that, you can see that he's a loving person. You can see that he's someone who cares about the people around him, he cares about his family, he can, cares about his players, cares about his staff, treats everyone as equals, treats the captain the same as you would a young player. So yeah, I feel as though you see the real person because you can see that he's... People probably have a um, conception of him as being maybe very emotional on, on the heart on the sleeve yeah. and that, which he is to an extent, but he knows how to control it in ways that is beneficial to everyone around him. I mean, presumably when you're training, he's not. He can't be on that full-on passion the whole time. Can yeah, he is at times. Is if it need, if it needs to be, then yeah. That's right. that's also something that is amazing about him. Is he he knows what needs to be said and what tone it needs to be said in at the right time. And what about when he's taking you aside one on one? What what's he done with you specifically to say, here you are Trent. Here's why we can, how we can improve things. How 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 does he manage that side of the job? Yeah, literally like what you said. He take you. He talks to you about what you need to improve, um, what things you need to do, need to do to be getting into the team. Why you're not in the team? He tell you why you're not in the team. Sometimes, sometimes you won't because he feels like that that maybe is what you need. Uh, maybe that's the message itself is that you're not on the team, so you need to do something to change. And more times than not, you know what you need to do. Um, as footballers, you you understand what you what you've done and what you haven't done to to be getting into teams. Um, so you, you you understand it without being given that explanation, um, but if if it needs to be explained to you, then the manager will explain to you. And how, how would you literally sit down with kind of clips of videos and go over that was good, that wasn't good, this was better, that could be better, or is it more about the stuff going on in the head? Um, no, he won't sit you down with with, with clips. Um, 
in a sporting environment like that, in a, in in the high the highest level, then I think I think the players and the, the athletes should be doing that by themselves. I feel as though if the manager's told you to do something and you don't really understand it, then you should go to the analysts and get the, get them clips and understand what is um, what what he meant. And then, it, but if you obviously you don't understand, you can always question. Mm. Um, what do you mean by that? Um, but yeah, he understands the, the the levels that need to need to be held at every single day. He keeps our mentality at hundred percent. He makes sure that the 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 message is instilled in us every single day to make sure that we're at our best. And what about within the within the kind of team structure? Do you think it's possible at your level to develop real friendships with your teammates, or do you think you're just all professionals and you're part of that team? No, I feel as though you will create proper friendships in, in them team environments because you spend so much time with people that you know so much about them for so long. If you play with someone and you see them every day for three, four years, mm. you, you're bound to have some sort of connection. It's not just materialistic because you play football and you're on the same team and then after that you, you've lost that connection. That I, I, I truly believe that that connection will, will last a lot longer than what people think because you're spending so much time with them, you're understanding them, you're, you're having fun with them when things are going well, you're going through good times, bad times, you're sharing a section of your life with with that person and then people for so long, they become your family. You, you, you're staying in a hotel with them two, three times a week, you're traveling with them. Mm. Um, so yeah, then bonds are created and they, they, they last a long time. And here's one for you. Liverpool winning, you're only allowed one of these. Liverpool win the treble, England win the World Cup. What are you having? <laughs> Liverpool every day. Um, it's a. Uh, <laughs> you've, you, I take, I take them both, obviously. But yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you because you want, you want to win everything as much as everything. You can't. I would never prioritize one trophy more than the other because they all mean the same thing. Is that you've been successful for that period of time with that team, um, with them people around you. So that trophy symbolizes more than just. Maybe a one game, a one game. It's mm. the league over the course of the season, the Champions Leagues, the the, the group stage, and the knockout knockout phases, and obviously then when you're talking international um, competitions, you're talking six six to eight weeks away with with one with one team. And how hard is that to go from being with these guys that, as you say, you're virtually living with? And then suddenly you're taken off for a few weeks with this different collection of people that you've played against most of them. And you you don't necessarily have the same level of time and commitment to each other. What's the difference between those two team environments? Is that a hard transition? No, I wouldn't say so. No, not not at all, really. Because feeling when you're in any team is that you want to win, and you know by doing that you have to be a good team. It's not about having the best plays. It's not about maybe having the best tactics. It's about everyone buying into the same idea as much as possible and trying to make sure that we um, we go out onto the pitch and we, we perform to our highest level because there's a support background, there's a support network behind us, there's the fans that are supporting us with everything that they've got, there's the manager getting the tactics right, there's us believing 100% that these tactics will win us this game if we stick to them and then going out there and doing that. So. In every environment that you're in, that's the that's the mentality. And I think, in the, obviously, the, the Liverpool side and the England side that I've been in um, probably is in both of them as, as much as anything. It must be hard, though, for Southgate, getting all these players coming in. You're all with your big clubs, with your big personality managers and all that stuff, and he's suddenly having to try and win. He doesn't have that as, as much time with you as he probably wants. Yeah, because if you think you're not with that team for as much as you are with your clubs, mm. um, so it's difficult, but... I'd say the the manager is top draw in terms of giving us the right information and mm. not overloading us in, on, with information because, like you said, he's only got such, such little time. It'd be easy for him to probably give us too much information. We're getting confused. When do I go and press him? When do I not? I'm I'm confused. There's questions and there's there's doubts. Whereas we know. 100% now what we're doing because he gives us them, them, them messages in, in different ways, different techniques in terms of 
unit meetings, team meetings, um, breaking up the set pieces into into different meetings in terms of not it all being as one big game plan. We're, mm. we're doing it on different days. So, would you check how Kieran Trippi is getting on in Madrid? Um, yeah, yeah, because you, you, you check. I check upon all all, all the leagues results really. No, but like he's the he, he like. Would you check up in him from the perspective of? Would he be in your mind as somebody you've got to be kind of better than the whole time? From Southgate's perspective? Um, I wouldn't say that was in my mind too much because I'm focused on playing as well as I can because the, there's, there's so many games and so little time to recover mm. and get get back to 100%. It's, you can't, there's no time to really linger on whether you played well or played bad or what other people are doing because you have to focus on yourself and focus on on, on, on your team so much at that, at that time. You know that when you're playing for Liverpool, you understand that by playing well, you'll you give you you put yourself into yeah. into into Gareth's mind as much as possible, and you understand that he picks his teams kind of off club form. So by doing that, you understand that you have to play well for your club to to play for England. So the focus should be playing playing for for your club until you are playing for England and then that's when the that's when things change and that's when your your mentality changes. But like I said throughout the season when you are playing for your club football then I'd say my mentality is solely on club football because there's no time for them distractions. And what, so right, I get that you've focused on football. What 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 do you do when you're not focusing on football? What interest have you got outside football? Just normal stuff. Go on. Um, do you play chess is it right you play chess? Sometimes. I've not as much as probably what people think I do, um, because you, it's you played Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, because it. Well, how did that? Happen? Just an opportunity came around and he's like the greatest chess player of all time. Yeah, so if you get the opportunity, you're not going to turn it down, are you? So what did you? What was your first move? I can't remember. <laughs> but you lost. Yeah, I lost. Did you? Did that defeat hurt you? Presumably not. No. 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 That's like you, me losing to you at. Keeping the ball up in the air, isn't it? Yeah, well, I don't Just know how good that football you're. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't say I'm, I'm not... I probably gave the wrong idea in terms of the chess thing because it's not like I play it on a daily basis at right. all. It's It was a more of a hobby growing up when, it, when the weather was bad outside and me and my brothers wanted probably... Uh, a bit more of, of something to do, and, and Dad taught us how to play chess, and then we, we realised that we can we can be competitive in that as well. Um, but yeah, I'd say I watch TV, films, music. What was the last film you saw? Oh, in the cinema. I went to go and see Bad Boys. Okay. Last book you read? Oh, James Milner's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you follow him on Twitter? The boring, the boring one. No. You don't? No. Oh, it's brilliant. One of the best things on Twitter, boring James Milner. I know, but when you know the real James Milner, you realise he's, he's not like that. Yeah, but that's why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> who's, the, who's your funniest teammate? Um, Robbo. Yeah? Yeah. Because? He's just funny. I think that's he likes he likes to do that. He's relaxed off the pitch. We, we all are, really. Um, I'd say it's quite off the pitch. It's quite a relaxed environment because it's so intense when we are training and when we are playing. That when we come off the pitch, we're able to just have banter and and, and relax with each other. Who's your closest friend in the squad? Oh, I wouldn't say I had one. I wouldn't say I had one. We all socialise with each other. We all are friends with each other, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to pick one person out. Which one has the most trouble with your accent? <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, I'd probably say it's Kumi, because obviously he's, he didn't speak a lot of English when he first came, so I don't... I imagine he didn't really understand me, specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Is it improved? Yeah, massively. Yeah? Massively. Really? Yeah. Probably the fastest learner I've ever, I've ever seen someone learn a language. Really? Yeah. It's incredible. And you see, when you're you, you, the, back, back to the, the connection with the fans, and you talk about the song and you hear the song, how conscious are you of, as a player, how conscious are you of the crowd? Um, I'd say, I'd say, we, I notice it. 
I know just when there's a good good atmosphere or if there's there's not because feeling you get a feeling of confidence, you get a feeling of momentum, of a striving to to go forward. And do you think they can create that, or are you creating that and they're responding to it? I'd say I'd probably say there was more rela reliance on us because. It's it. I've been a fan. I've been in state in in the stadium, and if if the performance is lacking that intensity and um, yeah, if the performance is lacking that intensity, it's hard to get motivated to start singing and to keep going and, and make sure them songs last a while. You might get the odd song and it, it dies out, and then there's kind of a, a a period of silence. Whereas if 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 we're at it 100 percent from the start and we're going forward, you're creating chances. Then the the only the only possibility there is for the fans is to is to keep shouting, to keep to keep singing, um, and obviously it just and then that's when it works part and parcel in terms of the mm. the the performance and the the intensity in our performances and the fans. Who's the worst dressed? I wouldn't say anyone dresses badly. Really? There's people like there's there's <laughs> the styles that I, I know I wouldn't be able to pull off or suit like Divock. Divock. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to. To, to pull off the, the stuff that he does. Right. But he, it looked good on him. Right. But I know if I put it on, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't look good at all. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't make, it, make him a bad dresser. No. It just makes me not suit his style. How, how, how do you think they're going to react when they see you dressed up in all these different <laughs> GQ groomed style clothing? Will they take the piss? Um, they'll be banter. I can, yeah. yeah, definitely, they'll be banter. Yeah. But... Like I said, that's part and parcel. It's like a family because addicts, when you go home and you're chilling with your brothers or you're chilling with your friends, you you get banter all the time. So you get used to it, you understand it. Mm. And obviously you you give it out as well, so you got to expect it. Are you still living at home with your mum? Yeah, yeah. How long is that going to last? Forever. As long as it needs to, really. Yeah. What do, what do you get out of that? I'll, I've always enjoyed having people around me that, that obviously I like and I, I love, so... To have family around me all the time, I found is is important. Is important. I've always enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that's probably the, the main reason. Obviously, it keeps me on the straight and narrow. Um, you don't know this. You don't strike me as the sort of guy who's going to go off the straight and narrow. Do you think if you weren't a footballer, do you think you might be a bit tempted to go doing wild stuff? No, no. Not what do all your mates from what your mates that you were growing up with who are not footballers? What do they all do these days? Well, a lot of them are still in university. Right. Yeah, a lot of them in university. A lot of them are. Um, I've got jobs, um, doing different things. But we're just we're still all friends. We still hang out. Still spend the same amount of time with each other, and I think that's important to to keep them relationships tight. And what does it mean if if somebody says you're a scouser? What does being a scouser mean to you? Yeah, I think it's an honour, really, to to be a scouser. I think a lot of people in the pool would say that because they're incredibly proud of it. It's something that. Obviously, not everyone can say, but the people who can say it say it proudly because there's nothing to be ashamed of. It's probably one of the the, the best things you can be. Um, you, you, everyone's got the same beliefs, the same drive to to succeed, the same h hard work, um, the hard work ethic, the tenacity to 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 do well, um, the passion in what they believe in is a massive thing in the in, in the city. I feel as though once you do get that passion, then it's it's something that is very hard to to, to stop. Do you read the Sun? No. Do you, do you think the Sun, the Liverpool thing, and the Sun will sort of go on forever? If 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 I am honest, I, it's hard for me to to comment on that because I feel as though obviously the events that took place were probably about a decade before I was born, mm -hmm. so. I wouldn't say, I'm still trying to learn about what happened. I'm still mm. trying to learn. So I feel as though not, I know I've got obligations to, to stand for for things. Obviously I've got beliefs, but I'm, I wouldn't say I'm educated enough in, in that sense to, to be given um, outright comments. Mm. I'm, I'm not educated on the, on the scenario enough. Mm. Um, Obviously, I'm still learning. I still want to learn about it. I still want to um, know more. But at this moment in time, it's still... It's not taking a political stand on it. It's about 
me trying to learn as much as I can about what happened. Are you political? Um, Jeff, you talk about everybody in Liverpool being, you know, having the same sort of values and the same passions and beliefs. I mean, it's a very kind of, it's pretty, it's defined as a very kind of left-wing sort of place. Yeah, um, you understand that growing up that Liverpool's different to many other cities in, in the UK, many other cities around the world, really. And obviously, growing up in the city, you, you know, you, you try and learn about what happened in the past because that's really what really started things and everything like that, but for, for us, we understand that things are how they are and we need to, to get on with it. That won't stop us from working hard and trying to make our dreams come true because that's something that, that like I said, that we believe in. We understand that there's a lot of things that go on in, in every city, but it's about the people. Um, and if the, the, the people have that admiration for each other and drive each other to, to be better, then mm. the city can only be on the, on the rise. Um, the last footballer I interviewed for GQ was Raheem Sterling, and we talked a lot about the whole race issue. Are you, have you been subject to any, if you directly experienced racism, in, either in your life or in football? I'd say the only time, um, not directly um, to me, um, really, I'd say the, the only time was, would be the Bulgaria incident. Really? That's the only time in your whole life? Yeah. Wow. Um, but obviously you understand that these things happen, um, which is unacceptable in, in any, whether it be on a football pitch or in everyday life, wherever it may be, it's completely unacceptable. Um, but you've never had that either in a football ground or, or outside a football ground? No, no, mm. no, no. But I feel as though it, that comes from, the, the racism comes from maybe a lack of education in terms of educating people to, to understand that every person's the same, no matter what colour skin they be, whether what gender, discrimination's not acceptable in any form because everyone's equal. Um, everyone deserves an equal opportunity to, to do what they want. And in terms of football, why shouldn't someone be able to go on a football pitch and express themselves because they're a different colour to someone else and, and you feel as though that's a problem? That's, it's, it's beyond Pretty crazy simple. for me, yeah. Mm. Uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Um, yeah, messy for me. Shankly or Paisley? Shankly. Bardsley or Loughton? <laughs> I can't answer. I can't answer that question. You're not going to pick her right back. No. Hey. No. Uh, one. The other thing Raheem also said is he hated playing at Burnley. Now tell me what it's like playing at Burnley, and I want to hear it's hard. Yeah, it's one of the most difficult grounds you'll ever play at, just because it's tight, you know what you're about to face is a physical battle, a team that's so determined to make it hard for you. Um you've got wingers that'll track you to the to the to the byline. They won't give you a yard. You know, you've got two big strikers and you've got two big centre halves that'll get their head on everything. Um, I'm loving I'm loving this. <laughs> Yeah, even the changing rooms, they're look so up, tight. Look at this. Oh, you hate the changing rooms, I love yeah, that. Yeah, they're so yeah. tight. Are they the worst changing rooms for the away team in the Premier League? Yeah, Palace Palace, Palace, Palace were tight, but they, they've had them redone. <laughs> they've had them redone, so it, it's not too bad anymore. Um, but yeah, Turf Moor is the worst for the changing rooms. Excellent. Long may it stay that way. Which team would you support if it wasn't Liverpool? Uh, which team? Have you got a Scottish team? Growing up, I was, I was Celtic, but now... Because of the, the yeah, connection uh, now, it's uh, pro probably neutral up there now. But I'd say the oh, favourite of the team would be Barca. Right. Yeah, I feel as though they've got kind of the same values and beliefs as Liverpool. They like to bring players through the academy. Um, I grew up watching Messi and that special Barcelona team with Iniesta, Javi, Omri, at all. All them players was... Could, do you, can you imagine yourself playing your whole career at Liverpool? Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. Would you be? Would you fancy playing in Spain or Germany or? Um, it's not something I've ever really thought about. I've always loved Liverpool. I've always supported them. Um, I've always played for them, so I've never had that reason to think about it. Yeah, still now I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit there in my room and daydream about playing somewhere else. Right now I'm a Liverpool player. I love the club more than anything. 
Um, I love everything about it. I love the fans, the people, love the city. So, no, I, 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 why would I think about that? Last question. What's, what's, so you, you, you live with your mum and your brother's your manager. Yeah. Right. And yet you spent your whole childhood fighting with your brother. <laughs> So, I wouldn't say we fought. You were very competitive. Yeah. So how does the competition work now? It's still the same. We're still the same. We have the same relationship as what we would. He's still my big brother. Um, but he's unbelievably good at what he does. He's always had that determination to be successful. Um, probably more in him than I've ever seen, really. Someone who just always find a way to work harder than he was the day the day before. It was, it, it still is to the day, in, incredible. I owe near enough everything to to him and the way he's, he's helped me. Um, and yeah, so we have a relationship in terms of he's still my brother and he, he's, he's my manager, but I don't see him as a manager, someone that I can trust and someone who's got my best interests at, at heart. Um, and wants to see me succeed. And obviously, without him, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Nowhere near. Good. Well, listen, lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I wish you well for every single game apart from when we come here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.